going on, Pete? Eh, we're going fishing, man. We're gonna slide into this nice structure and current area. State put some riprap in here. Uh, we got a slight incoming current right now, not great, but uh, we're gonna start slinging in here. Then we got rock piles offshore, we got current. There's been fishing here. Water's warmer than it is in the main stem, which draws the, the, uh, the life. Life comes into this warmer water. So we're gonna slide in here and start slinging crankbaits and uh, maybe some pies and plastics. PKDs. See what happens. Yeah. That's strange, huh? Fish here? Absolutely. Alright, we're gonna count down to it, alright? I want you to catch a fish in three, <laughs> two, one, hook up. Oh, maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> that would have been cool if it worked though, right? Yeah. We just went over a pile of fish. Yeah. Big school to our right. Right here off the right side. There's a big school. Wham, bam, bam. Small fish, but there, there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's another way. We're, we're on rocks right now. I put the rod between my legs for a second. Yeah, we just came over a rock pile. That's a good one. What's the region? Is there a bigger That's same what you got. They're all good, baby. That's what we're doing, man. We're poaching each other. Yeah, it's a fat fish, man. Nice one, man. Back, get back, buddy. That's a nice little fatty. They're healthy looking, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're nice, real when bright I white. Video, mm -hmm. I have to yeah. <laughs>
when I'm going to have moving current. So okay. I'm going to get into a zone. I'm going to see moving current. Like that point there, just out from us, there is a moving current. It's going across an old side bank. And there's a subtle color change in the water. That indicates current also. So I'm looking for current, whether it be ripples like that or a subtle color change in the water. And we throw across that. This is what happens right here. We, uh, we pop a fish. Granted, they're not big right now in here today, but they're pretty decent fish. We just did get about a 30 inch that you had. Structure and I know there's shallower water under there, it's all side bank, some color change, and current. And that's how I catch fish everywhere I go. That's what I do in the shallow water. How, how deep is it right here? Under the boat is about eight nine feet deep. Over where that, that current rip is, where the subtle color change is, it's about five feet, four or five feet. An old side bank under the water. All of these islands are eroding away, and uh, there's a lot of that kind of situation. Ooh. Okay, and we. We just moved the boat up, like you said. And we got rudely interrupted by this That's guy. right. We used the motor guy to pull forward. <laughs> and we got rudely interrupted here. Yeah. But we'll take it. Tommy the Crusher at Damsky. We'll love it. That's our six accurate. Nice. School. Bad. Yeah. Fun on a light tackle. Oh, Dan's got one there. Look, there's another. No. Sell a boat up short pump, baby. <laughs> <laughs> shallow plugs and you switch to the swim bait a little closer to the bottom and you're schooling us with it. And I guess the current picks up and gets stronger as fish are going to get lower and lower and lower and hang in those little pockets to get yep. out of it. You buttoned up right next to the boat. Yep. The bigger the fish, the tighter to the bottom he'll be. You know that. They don't want to work. Yeah, the crankbaits work. I don't think we're getting low enough. No. And then nice. it's like everybody's switched over. Here we go. Fish. It's nice. Using a six inch bass candy delight. It's a simple straight tail plastic. It doesn't look all that special here, but in the water it looks great and it imitates, you know, the bait fish that they're eating in here. Um, and we jig it along and, and look, it, it's, it's uh, very erratic. And when you work it across structure, they can't say no to So I use a lot of bass candy delights. I use six inches in the shallow water thing. And then uh, when we've got bigger fish in the fall or at the power plant in the winter, and when we've got you know, good sized fish, then I go with the 10 inchers and they just demolish big fish. So that's what I'm using right now. If I had to have one lure in my tackle box, I can fish these on the top, I can fish them down low, I can fish them midway so I can cover everything. So I can cover lots of water with this and catch everything that swims. This is what makes it fun, right? The light gear? Light stick, yeah. This, and you're using... Yeah, th this is a custom rod from Backyard Custom, custom Rods. A friend of mine, Steve, makes them. And it's a, it's a great stick. It's six foot eight inches tall. It's got fast action tip and it's got lots of play with it, but yet it's got backbone. Yeah. So you gotta have backbone because you could catch a 40 inch yeah. here. So, and, and yet they're fun with 20 inches. So 20 inches is a blast, 40 inches is no problem. And uh, you detect everything when you're jigging. Detection is crucial because when you're working your jig, uh, any kind of subtle touch, you have to detect that. With mono, you can't detect it. So I'm using 14 pound fire line. Right. You can detect any kind of touch, so then you you know set up you got the fish. Yeah. And we got a fish over here, don't we? <laughs> yeah. 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 You see yours, Dan? Yeah, they did. They, they kind of chilled out and then moved in. It's old school. Nice. <laughs> Oh, BKD. He won't let me put the camera down. Yeah. 
Four Seasons. Four Seasons style. That's that is right there. Four four on at one time. Four on. Yeah. And see that nice band in the stick. I love the band in the sticks. I mean, he takes orders on those rods. He does. Yeah. Backyard custom rods. If you were to Google that, backyard custom rods. He he makes them to order. Yeah. He's a great guy. Talks about what you want. He he does trolling sticks, big sticks, really? little sticks. He's very good. I'm gonna have to get in touch with him. Yeah. Those, those rods really look good. <laughs> Catch a lot of fish there, that's yeah. for sure. And fish aren't coming off, even, even <laughs> no. with the lighter crankbaits. No. Okay, yeah. lick Give him a lick, Max. <laughs> no biting, Max. We told you, only licking. <laughs> we are looking at a, a, the eroding islands of Chesapeake Bay on the eastern shore. This is Hooper's Island. And this is a graveyard we're looking at up in here. And the islands are eroding away. They can't stop the erosion. And there's tombstones falling in the water. And there's an actual tomb that's sticking into the... That's actually like a crypt. That's a crypt <laughs> sticking out. Yes, it is. Wow, let's see if you can see it. It's... That is amazing. Yep. yep, the eroding shoreline of Chesapeake Bay on the eastern shore. And uh, if someone wanted to book you, are you uh, booked way out or... I'm booked, I'm right now I'm booked for a couple months out, but uh, if, you know, if somebody were to contact me in the winter, I'm usually wide open in you know, April, May, and that's great skinny water island, shallow water fishing, beautiful stuff. And do you do, uh, you still you do walk-ons once in a while too, right? When I'm not booked, a few days out I do a walk-on trip, but I don't have a whole lot of walk-ons going on right now because I'm booked every single day. So people should look, watch, follow you on Facebook in case they're hoping for a... Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff, you know, Facebook especially. Yeah.